Now that we are at molecular compounds, it's time to present molecular compound nomenclature. Naming of compounds can go down several branches depending on what type of compound it is. For ionic compounds, it's already been presented that oxidation state is key. So if you have a metal with a nonmetal, or some combination of polyatomic ions and metals or nonmetals, naming conventions were covered in previous lectures. I'm going to review them quickly because questions will be coming. So if you have a group one, two, or aluminum metal and a simple nonmetal monoatomic anion, the name is simply the metal and the monoatomic anion with "-ied at the end. If you have a metal with a polyatomic, typically the combination is the polyatomic is the anion. We simply name the metal and the polyatomic, provided it's in group one, two, or aluminum, or one of the exceptions, which I hope you recall. If we have a transition metal, oxidation number is important. So for example, cobalt with chlorine, we have to specify the oxidation state to know how many chlorines make a neutral compound. And if we have one of those heavy main group metals, again, oxidation number must be stated. And in this case, I have it with a polyatomic. Molecular compounds are combinations of nonmetals in nonmetals. So in molecular compounds, we get to say how many. Typically, the less electronegative nonmetal comes first in the compound. It may have a slight positive polarity. And the more electronegative nonmetal comes second in the compound. And this typically has a more negative polarity. So we use prefixes. Prefixes for the first nonmetal and prefixes for the second nonmetal. The second nonmetal also gets an eyed ending. So for example, nitrogen and oxygen form several different compounds depending on the stoichiometric ratio. So we're going to need prefixes to properly name the compound. The top one is dinitrogen trioxide. Notice how we go with the first atom's name, nitrogen, but the second one has an eyed ending. And di, of course, means two. Tri, of course, means three. The next one we would call dinitrogen monoxide. Again, notice the eyed ending. And typically, if you have two vowels together, one of the vowels is dropped. Monoxide would sound strange. Monoxide. The last one is nitrogen dioxide. So here's another naming convention. If you have one of the first element, you do not need mono. Simply the element name will be fine. So what are these prefixes? Well, they're derived from the Greek language. Many of them you probably already know. Mono stands for one. And surely you've heard of carbon monoxide. Di is for two atoms, carbon dioxide. Tri, this would be like a triangle, so three sides, three atoms. So how about phosphorus trichloride? Tetra, have you heard of a tetrahedron? Four-sided. So how about carbon tetrachloride? Penta, for five. Phosphorus pentafluoride. Hexa for six. How about disulfur hexabromide? And then the rest are hepta, octa, nona, deca. So hopefully your experience in geometry has given you some knowledge of what these prefixes are. P4O7 we would call tetraphosphorus heptoxide. And you'll encounter the others as we go along. So this is an exercise I typically do in person in class. It turns out that recalling information is the most effective way to learn something. So I'm going to put in some pauses to give you time to recall the information. Let's start with SO3. Sulfur is a nonmetal. Oxygen is a nonmetal. Therefore, this compound is 
molecular. So how would you name it? I am hoping you come up with sulfur trioxide. Chromium, if you look at your periodic table, is a metal. Sulfur is a non-metal. So what type of compound is this? I'm hoping you come up with ionic. Now to the naming. Do you need Roman numerals for chromium? Yes, you do. So what is sulfur's typical charge? I hope you come up with minus two. So that means the chromium must be plus six. So we will call this chromium six sulfide. Now I'm gonna stop here to highlight a few things. First off, when we made the compound, we may have crisscrossed and then simplified. So you cannot get the oxidation state simply by reverse crisscrossing and coming up with chromium three. You need to think through what is the typical oxidation state of the sulfur, which is minus two. So therefore the net sum would be minus six. So chromium must be plus six. The second item is just a helpful mnemonic. If it's molecular, say how many. If it's ionic, does that not look like a Roman numeral I, which belongs in an oxidation state? So if it's ionic, you may need oxidation state. All right, let's continue. Sodium, BrO2. Well, sodium is the hint that this is an ionic compound. I want you to think about this, which is a polyatomic, and how you would name this particular polyatomic. And I hope you come up with sodium, and that is bromite. Selenium with chlorine both non-metals, so molecular. So how about selenium dichloride? Chlorine with oxygen, molecular. I hope you come up with dichlorine heptoxide. And remember, the first element has the name as is, maybe with a prefix, the second element has the ide, MgSO3. Well, magnesium gives it away. That would be ionic. So this SO3 is a polyatomic. So you're going to have to think through, how do I name this polyatomic ion? Magnesium's in group two, so we know it's oxidation state. I hope you come up with magnesium sulfite. The last one is one students often get confused by because they look at N, H, and F and think, well, that's nonmetals. Hydrogen is an honorary nonmetal. I hope you recognize this polyatomic ion, which has a charge. So this would be something composed of a cation and an anion. So that makes it a ionic compound. And I hope you know the name of NH4 one plus as a polyatomic. That is ammonium with its partner fluoride. Oh, and just a spelling issue that students sometimes get frustrated with in WebAssign, it is F-L-U-O, not F-O-U. It's not flour, such as we bake bread with, it's fluoride, such as you brush your teeth with. So now here come the questions. I've mixed in ionic and molecular compounds and ionic and molecular naming. So please go through the exercise of deciding what type of compound this is, and then choosing the appropriate naming convention.
This one asks, give the IUPAC name of phosphorus with five chlorines. This one would like the name of PB with parenthesis NO2 and parenthesis 2. How about Se2F6?